Hello and welcome to this video on ethnicity and educational achievement, external factors. There is evidence of differences between different ethnic groups in education and the extent to which they achieve or underachieve. In terms of what we mean when we talk about ethnic group, we can use this definition. This is people who share common history, customs and identity, as well as in most cases, language and religion, and who see themselves as a distinct unit. In sociology, we focus more on ethnicity, which is something which is socially constructed, rather than race, which is often considered to be something which is biological. And so when we're thinking about an ethnic group, we're thinking about a group of people who share something in common. They have a common history, they have a common language, they have a common religion, they eat the same foods, they may have a customary mode of dress, for example. And these are the things that really bind that group together. In the UK, we have lots of different ethnic groups. We live in a very multicultural society. But of course, the dominant group is a white majority, a white British majority. Um, and we have lots of different minority groups, everything from uh, black Caribbean uh, groups to African groups to um, different groups who have come from parts of Europe, for example. There exists inequalities in educational achievement of different ethnic groups. What we find that's interesting is that some ethnic groups in our education system do very well and others don't do so well. And for us as sociologists, the big question is why? It's also important that we think about gender and class differences. And as we know, or we will come to find out, girls outperform boys in education and the middle classes outperform the working classes in education. And it's important to think about how ethnicity, gender and social class intersect and impact individual students. What's also interesting with regards to ethnicity and ethnic differences in education is that this is a moving feast. This is a changing picture, if you will. That is because you know, some groups are doing very well now that weren't doing so well in the past. Uh, whereas there are groups that perhaps in the past we would have taken for granted as doing very well and now perhaps don't do so well. And again, as sociologists, we ask the question, why? And increasingly, we find that white working class boys are falling behind their black and Asian peers. Sociologists are interested in the reasons for these differences and break down the differences into external factors and internal factors. By external factors, we are talking about what is going on outside the classroom or outside the school or outside the education system. Whereas in internal factors, we are interested in what is going on inside the school, the classroom or the education system. We're going to look at three different areas, namely cultural deprivation, material deprivation and racism in wider society. In terms of cultural deprivation, Cultural deprivation theorists see a lack of intellectual and linguistic skills as a cause for underachievement in minority pupils. Now, in previous videos, we looked at cultural deprivation in some depth and we considered how you know, some students, some young people are perhaps not being stimulated at home. Perhaps they speak a code of English which is um, less erudite or does not have enough descriptors or isn't abstract enough. And this means that these students can struggle in school. And if these children are turning up to school and they do not have the necessary intellectual and linguistic skills, they're going to underperform. And it would appear that this is something that occurs amongst ethnic minority pupils. It may be that there is a lack of stimulating and enriching experiences in black Asian minority ethnic families. And again, this is where there may be an intersection here with social class. We often find that black Asian minority ethnic families are disproportionately um, feature within the working classes with less money um, that comes with being a member of the working class and perhaps doing a manual labour job or a low pay job. Uh, it may mean that there's less money to pay for these stimulating toys or stimulating books and enriching experiences that a student needs if they're going to achieve an education. Again, also, it may be because in black Asian minority ethnic families, there's a propensity to use the restricted code of English. So thinking about uh, the English language, you know, we break it down into the elaborated code and the restricted code. And generally, the restricted code is used by the working classes. But of course, if in a black age minority ethnic family, English is not uh, the first language, the code that's being used of English is likely to be restricted. And that might be uh, a cause of underachievement. 
Cultural deprivation theorists also see a lack of motivation as a cause for underachievement in minority pupils. So most children are socialised into the mainstream culture which promotes competitiveness and deferred gratification. So in the UK, in British culture, competing and you know putting off the pleasure or the joy for a greater pleasure and a joy later, so working hard maybe in school to get the qualification at the end of the day or the end of the year, that's the aim. Those are the... the the values which are inculcated in children from a young age if you're part of the uh, white British mainstream uh, ethnic group. It may be, however, that members of black Asian minority ethnic um, families or children from those backgrounds may not be taught these values. They may be taught different values and they often, uh, it has been argued, display a fatalistic live for today attitude that does not value education. So if you're primarily, primarily focusing on the here and now, rather than thinking about your future, that's going to cause problems in the long term with regards to gaining qualifications. Cultural deprivation theory see a dysfunctional family structure as a potential root cause of underachievement in minority pupils. So many black families are lone parent and single mother families which may struggle financially. We know or you may come to find out that you know, generally women earn less than men in a single parent family where we tend to have mothers as the, as the head of the family. I mean, there's less money coming into the home with less money. There's less money to pay for you know, trips, stimulating toys and books and so on. And again, that might lead to uh, underperformance by black age minority ethnic children or in this example, black children. With dad not being around, the neoliberal new right would argue that there's a lack of a strong male role model and that is going to lead to a lack of discipline and focus uh, in schools. And in particular amongst you know, black boys, there is a concern by the neoliberal new right that they need to have dad around more uh, to be sort of laying down the law and telling him what he needs to be doing, how he needs to be focusing. Saul found that just about 60% of black Caribbean children live in lone parent households compared with 22% of white children. And so that might help to account for some of the differences we see in achievement between these two ethnic groups. Arguably, lacking a male role model or dad not being around or living in a single parent family could lead to a cycle of dysfunction. And again, this is something that the neoliberal new right are very interested in. They would argue that uh, perhaps, you know, with dad not being there, children are going to grow up thinking it's normal for dad not to be there. And so perhaps boys may emulate their father's absence if they come to have children themselves. And girls may grow up to think, well, you know, I've got to be a mother who stands on my own two feet and may want to be a single parent family. So that cycle of dysfunction may continue. Other cultural deprivation theorists have cited the black experience of slavery as being a culturally devastating one, which has led to today a low self-esteem amongst the black community. Uh, as a result of losing traditional or tribal languages, uh, religions and family systems. So um, as we know, the black community historically um, suffered at the hands of uh, the European imperial uh, powers who sought to enslave them and use them as cheap, if not free labor. And although that is now something which isn't um, carried out um, and many hundreds of years has passed, it was such a disrupting experience culturally that perhaps we're still feeling the effects today or perhaps, you know, the black community in the UK and elsewhere around the world are still feeling the effects of that loss of kind of history and language and family structures and so on. In terms of the comparison with Asian families, we generally find that Asian families, and you know, that word Asian is somewhat problematic, and in the UK and in sociology we do use it in its broadest sense. We are talking about people from everywhere from you know, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, to Japan, Korea, and so on. So it's a very, very broad term when we talk about Asian. But we do find that Asian families generally have a more positive attitude to education. They generally have higher aspirations, and the parents in those families are very supportive of their children in education. Um, this could be because Asians arguably had a different experience of colonialism. Although the European imperial powers did colonize uh, large parts of Asia, they often treated um, the Asian populace differently. Didn't always enslave them in perhaps the same way that they had enslaved uh, black Africans. And so therefore perhaps the experience was not as devastating and many Asian communities were able to maintain their traditional religion, language, family systems and so on. So because those are intact, perhaps that's why we see Asians do somewhat better in education. 
We also find that Asians uh, promote a respectful attitude to parents um, and that it's expected that children will look up to not only their parents but to their elders such as teachers and you know will respect them and do as they say and this could potentially be helpful in the school environment. However, often all of that support, that high aspiration and arguably that focus could lead to stress and anxiety um, and as a result um, perhaps some of the children might underperform or have poor mental health and in particular we often find that some Asian families have a controlling attitude towards their girls and may decide even to um, take them out of education from an earlier age or you know expect them to finish education maybe just after secondary school or now as it would be post 18. To compare to white working class families, black Asian minority ethnic children often aspire to attend university more uh, so than white working class children. So what's interesting is we're finding that black Asian minority ethnic children, young adults, they want to go to university, they want a degree because they believe that that's their route out of poverty, it's a way of improving themselves, improving their lives. When we then sort of turn to white working class children and young adults and ask them about their, their future goals and aims and aspirations, many don't want to go to university, they see it as not for them, um, they see it as something which is middle class and is outside of their reach and they worry often about you know, fitting in and whether or not it's, uh, they, they can cope with the workload and this sort of thing. So whereas black Asian minority ethnic children see education as a way up in society and out of poverty, this doesn't seem to be the case for the white working classes. White working class street culture amongst children and young adults is often quite brutal. We often find that in areas of the UK where there is a large proportion of uh, white working class youths or young people, um, there may be a propensity for gangs to form or um, subcultures to organise and sometimes these gangs can come into conflict and they can be quite brutal, those conflicts, and sometimes they spill over into schools and that therefore causes disruption. An interesting piece of research which was cited in The Independent in 2013 uh, by the Centre for Social Justice showed that only 26% of poor white British boys obtained five A-star to C grades at GCSE, including maths and English. And a reminder that that five GCSEs A-star to C grade um, is very important. It's the way the government measures achievement. So if you have those, you've achieved. If you didn't quite get that, then you're considered to have underachieved compared to 40% of black boys and 63% of the country as a whole. So there's clearly a big difference between white working class boys and other ethnic groups in our society. Now there are a number of criticisms of cultural deprivation um, that we should consider. Some of these have come up before. Firstly, it fails to recognise positive effects of ethnicity on achievement. So in black single mother families, the mother is often a strong independent role model for their daughters. And we know that black girls outperform black boys. So it could be that these girls are looking up to their mum who's going out and working and earning and providing for her family and paying the bills and teaching the children norms and values. And they may think, well, I want to be like mum. I want to emulate that. And that's a positive effect of ethnicity on education and educational achievement. We may also be underestimating teacher racism, and this may prevent black students' achievement rather than black students simply having low self-esteem or a weak culture as a product of the disruption of the historical experience of slavery. So it could be that the teachers are racist, and there's lots of different forms of racism. Some of them are very overt, and some are slightly more covert, and kind of teachers keep them to themselves. Sometimes teachers may not even realise they are being racist, and yet they're engaging in certain behaviours which are prejudiced or discriminatory. So maybe we need to sort of drill down more on that and think about internal factors rather than external factors, and engaging in what could be referred to as victim blaming, because Arguably, cultural deprivation does blame the victim. It sort of seems to turn around to black, Asian, minority, ethnic children and say, well, you know what, you need to work harder. You could overcome these obstacles if you, uh, you know, turn to your parents and said, this is what you should be doing. Or if the parents realised that they needed to do more, perhaps that could change everything. So maybe that's somewhat problematic to be you know, blaming the victims. Instead, perhaps we should be thinking, okay, what could be done to try and ameliorate those problems? Arguably also, it's not possible to be culturally deprived um, because how can you be deprived of your own culture if that's what you've been brought up in? Um, you know, that is your culture, that's what you've been taught. How can you be deprived of it, especially if you are of a different 
ethnicity than the, than say the white majority in the UK. So it could be rather that these people are culturally different rather than culturally deprived, and perhaps the education system needs to catch up and needs to find a way um, of you know recognising that and celebrating it and rewarding it as necessary. Finally, our curriculum is arguably ethnocentric. It focuses upon a single ethnicity, namely white British ethnicity, and it is biased, therefore, in favour of white culture. Perhaps the syllabus, perhaps the questions and the exams and the different tests, perhaps they are all focused on testing an understanding of white British culture. And in a multicultural Britain that we have today and that we live in today, perhaps that now needs to change. So that brings to the end looking at cultural deprivation. Let's now consider material deprivation. So, in terms of a definition, material deprivation is the lack of material necessities seen as normal for everyday life. It's the things you need to, to live, to survive, and that will vary from you know, place to place depending on you know, the quality of life in the country you live. Material deprivation explanations see educational failure as a result of substandard housing and poor income. So, if children are growing up in housing which is badly ventilated, it's cold, um, has mould and these sorts of things, perhaps there's not enough space for them to do their studies, they're going to underperform. Moreover, if there's not enough money coming to a household, again, it means that perhaps the children don't have the correct tools, may not have access to computers and the internet, may not um, be able to go on the trips that they need to, and these sorts of things. We generally see material inequality between um, different ethnic groups. Some groups are you know, materially very wealthy, others are not so much. And you know, black, Asian, minority ethnic children are more likely to be um, materially poor. Uh, so for example, Indians and whites generally have a higher social class position than Bangladeshis and Pakistanis, and this is reflected in educational achievements. So there does seem to be a correlation between access to materials um, or not, and achievement or not in the UK's education system. There may therefore be a danger that we overestimate the effects of cultural deprivation and underestimate the role of material deprivation. So um, as sociologists, we do focus an awful lot on culture, but perhaps we need to take a slightly more Marxist approach and think more of uh, you know, the material wealth of students and whether or not they have the things they need to achieve. However, social class factors do not always override the influence of ethnicity. For example, middle class black pupils do comparatively poorly compared to middle class pupils from other ethnic groups. So whilst, again, class and ethnicity intersect, um, it may be that it's not always clear cut and uh, there does seem to be a disparity between um, the middle class children from um, black communities and other ethnic groups and their achievements. That brings us to the end of material deprivation. Finally, racism in wider society. Poverty itself may be a byproduct of racism. And a reminder that racism is an ideology uh, which distinguishes between different groups based on skin colour and argues that one group is perhaps superior or that other groups are inferior. Discrimination, this is when you act upon racism, is a continuing and persistent feature of the experience of Britain's people of colour. So, Know, those communities who are black, Asian, minority, ethnic, they, we do find that you know racism is something which they experience, uh, maybe not every day, but it is something which is part of their lives. And you know, sadly, something that we have seen post um, the vote for the United Kingdom to leave the European Union is a spike in racism and racially aggravated incidents. And it appears that this is something which, sadly, black, Asian, minority, ethnic members of our society are having to suffer uh, in increased amounts going forward. Racial discrimination leads to social exclusion. So in housing, for example, minorities are often forced into substandard accommodation. So often it is local councils um, and various institutions connected to them who decide how housing is, for example, handed out and who gets what. For those people who have applied for social housing, uh, otherwise referred to as council housing, um, and Often, you know, some of that housing will be very good and others will be not so good. And it may be that there is some racism going on within those institutions, which means that the substandard housing gets given to black, Asian, minority, ethnic individuals or families, whereas the perhaps better quality housing gets given to uh, the white majority uh, individuals or families. In employment, often companies are more encouraging to white candidates over other candidates. So again, thinking about, you know, the parents of children who are in education, if you know black age minority ethnic candidates are applying for jobs 
and not getting them and therefore having to go for a lower paid, lower skilled job, there's less money. Whereas perhaps white candidates are being encouraged or they're being accepted and getting the jobs and therefore being able to provide what is necessary for their children to achieve. This helps explain why minorities are more likely to face low pay and unemployment, affecting their children's educational achievement. So there is a relationship here between the material and educational achievement, but it may be motivated, as we see here, by racism in wider society. That brings to the end of racism in wider society, and that also brings to the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.